friends, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, say what you will about the much maligned Manoj Knight Shyamalan, but there was a time when this author director could do no wrong. And today, I've decided to revisit that age. A time when the man who almost ruined the Avatar franchise, who gave us such hideousnesses as Ong and Soka, was almost infallible, almost invincible, almost unbreakable. <laughs> Released in 2000, Unbreakable tells the superhero origin story as it might appear in the real world. A lone survivor of a terrible accident may just be the hero we all need, but the mysterious stranger that seeks to guide him to this fate has his own agenda. An agenda that threatens to change everything. Performing far from spectacularly at the box office, critical attention was more supportive leading to a Rotten Tomatoes score of 68%. You know, I once thought I was unbreakable, as you do when you're young. Then I came to break my elbow. Oh well, never mind. Anyway, get ready for a decidedly cerebral superhero smackdown with... Unbreakable! Meet David Dunn the only survivor of a very nasty train crash. Still on fire and as a debris... Now, I would have a moment for the victims of the crash, but they don't really impact the story any further. So, instead, I give my sympathies. And let's return to the sole survivor. But shock! There's not a scratch on him! And then he gets a mysterious note. Well, that's a bit of a personal question, and it's certainly no way to break the ice if you ask me. I mean, if that was me, I'd suspect it was one of them private healthcare vultures circling. Boy, I'd like to give them what for. Do you know that... Actually, I'll spare you the rant. And believe you me, it is a doozy. Cut to 1974, and a young sufferer of a very rare bone disease. In an effort to get him back into the world, his mother buys him a comic book. This begins a lifelong obsession, which we witness back in the present day. Enter David, who converses with our curator, Elijah Price. You see, Elijah suffers with osteogenesis imperfecta, a disease which makes the bones less dense, more brittle, and easily breakable. Luckily for him, he only suffers from type 1 of the disease, which goes up to type 4. Type 4 sufferers do not live long and happy lives. Now, Elijah believes that because there is someone like him who suffers with osteogenesis imperfecta and has bones that are easily breakable, there might be someone on the other end of the scale whose bones are more dense, more difficult to break. And osteogenesis superior, if you will. Yeah, they make a fortune if they make pills for that. Get on it, science! But David isn't convinced. What exactly is it that you do? I'm a security guard. It is kind of unbelievable that a comic book art gallery owner would contact you out of the blue, telling you that he's got reason to believe that you just might be Superman in disguise. Then again, I suppose the clues are there if you look for them. For example, David is a security guard, a protector of the people and a keeper of the peace. From little acorns, mighty oaks do grow. Nevertheless, Elijah tries again sometime later to convince our security guard protagonist, as he seems to have a knack for nipping trouble in the bud. Elijah then tracks the man David suspected. But oh dear! Concrete stairs. They can be murder. Kind of puts me in mind of my own break. Oh no, it wasn't on concrete stairs. Somebody put a piece of cloth in my way. And I was running along, not looking where I was going. Slipped, tripped, and landed on my elbow. 
But anyway, let's move on. Lifting weights in their basement, we discover that David can press over 300 pounds. And so, as happens in the real world, Elijah enters physiotherapy for his break. And who should be his physiotherapist? Why, only Audrey, David's wife. Plot convenience, folks. It's hackneyed and terrible. But still, coincidences have been known to happen. And Elijah inquires about the car accident that brought them together. You see, David and his then-girlfriend, now-wife, Audrey, were in a car crash many years ago. David pretended to be injured and gave up a promising American football career to be with his lady love. Perhaps a part of him regrets it. Still, he'll soon have an all-new career to keep him occupied. A routine childhood accident for Joseph brings an interesting twist to the tale. You see, as a kid, David almost drowned in the school pool. They managed to revive him on the side, but they still let the legend circulate as a grim reminder of pool safety. Sweet, merciful coconuts. And then young Joseph decides to test this theory for himself. Well, I know that some kid might wish some terrible things on their parents in the height of tantrum or the cold rage of spite, but I never heard of a kid that intentionally shot his parents, much less one that did so to prove a point. Thankfully, sanity prevails. And we discover that David does have a weakness. Two skinny little kids were fooling around in a pool dunking me and I swallowed some water. I must say, though, it is a little bit daft to make a superhero whose main weakness is water. Flipping water! And so we set the stage for the debut of the nameless hero. And while some crimes are greater than others... The greatest crime of all leads David to follow the janitor to the house he stole and rescue the children he kidnapped. And of course, showdown with the villain himself. Well, Shyamalan's no action director, I can tell you that. The next morning, David shares his exploits with his son. And that's it, isn't it? Well, not quite. As is often the case in Shyamalan's work, there's a twist in this tale. As at Elijah's gallery opening, the truth of the accidents is finally revealed. Passengers aren't allowed in there. Along with Mr. Glass. So that was unbreakable. And actually, I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. This movie is dominated by its score. The twin light motifs of hope and impending doom twisted together to create the duality of the nature of these two characters. David Dunn, the nameless hero, and Elijah, Mr. Glass, Price. And composer James Newton Howard has done a fantastic job with it. Not to mention that the performances, while all necessarily melodramatic, to a point, still feel real, and the subtle menace of Samuel L. Jackson's Elijah Price really makes this film. What isn't so good is that the pace is slow. The main concept is hammered into our heads, foreshadowings are heavily signposted, most of the audience figuring out that our hero is far more breakable when water is involved long before it's actually stated, and as a comic book movie, it is almost entirely devoid of action. Though, as a deliberate drama, based around the theme of a real superhero, Unbreakable is a difficult watch for me, mostly because of its downbeat nature. Dunn's world is a faded, muted one, 
a thousand miles away from the four-colour heroics of the comic books. And at 108 minutes, it's no epic tale of good versus evil. And whatever future sins Shyamalan had yet to commit, he's at least given us a symbol of hope in David Dunn. If you're looking for the thriller minute roller coaster of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, then I'd advise you to go watch those movies. But for a more down-to-earth take on what it means to be a hero, and discovering your place in the world, it's definitely worth your time to consider Unbreakable. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you the wisdom to find your place in the world. Hopefully without killing anyone else in the process. So long, folks. Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there!